Welcome to our review on distance time graphs. So the first thing that we need to do is to learn what the different lines on a distance time graph actually represent. So a horizontal line on a distance time graph means the object is stationary. A diagonal line means that the object is moving at a steady speed. If it's a curved line, then it's moving at a changing speed. And the overall gradient of our line does tell us the actual speed the object is moving at. So make sure you learn those four key points about our distance time graph. So one of the things they could ask you to do on a question relating to distance time graphs is to calculate the speed. So if we've got a nice setup like the one on the right there with a nice diagonal line, then in order to calculate speed, draw a right angled triangle underneath the line as illustrated there. Then you find the change in distance and the change in time for your triangle. And then you substitute that into your speed formula. So distance divided by time will give us the speed. The second type of graph we could see here is a displacement time graph. And the only way you're really going to identify the difference between them is by looking at the Y axis label. So you've got a distance time graph at the top and a displacement time graph at the bottom. And what we actually have represented by them is different. So distance time graphs show the total distance that's traveled, but we don't know in what direction this is. Whereas a displacement time graph, we can actually have a positive zero or negative gradient. And the gradient is velocity because this one has direction associated with it. So what we find is at the end of that graph, you can see in the bottom, where it then slopes back down to the x-axis, there's our negative gradient, which tells us we're returning back to our start point. If we were to be asked to calculate the velocity from a displacement time graph, then we'd go through the same steps that we did before. First thing, you draw a right angle triangle under the line of the area we're concerned with. The next thing we do is we work out the change in displacement and the change in time just by subtracting your starting point from the end point for each. And then finally, we use our velocity formula to find the answer. So velocity is the change in displacement divided by the change in time. So 400 divided by 250 in our example gives us 1.6 meters per second. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can relate the motion of an object to the line on a distance time graph. You can describe what the slope on a distance time graph tells you, and you can use distance time graphs to calculate the speed at which the object is moving.